In this video we're going to look at the various tools within the surface modeling and surface interrogation tools within Business Center. So the first very basic one is the ability to swap the direction that triangles are formed. So if I zoom in on this road model I can simply click on a triangle and that then swaps the direction with its neighbor. So a very simple tool just to change how the model is formed. So this can help with sloping a surface in a desired manner without having to add brake lines. To this model we can then also look at adding a surface edge brake line. So if I look at how this model is formed at the moment, there's a range of brake lines going around the edge of the model, but not one that goes around the complete surface. So I can push the create surface edge brake line command to create a line BL for brake line and push OK and that then gives us a line that goes around the entire model. This is very useful for ensuring that volumes are calculated to the correct area and also for generating boundary lines to stake out in the field with SCS 900. In this example if I use this line as our existing ground model I can then create another surface from that and if I look at that in my slicer view and turn on my other surface I can see how they interact with each other. I just did change the vertical exaggeration. So we can see here there's it's maybe not tinned directly from the top to the bottom of the slope here, it's joined to other triangles along our model. So what I can look at doing is changing that triangulation. So if I select the existing ground surface and I can change some of the properties of that. So the first one I'm going to change is the rebuild method. I'm going to change that from auto to by user. And now if I make any changes to this model, it's up to me to then rebuild the surface. This is very helpful for minimizing processing speeds, so saving time. Uh, so what I can then look at doing is changing some settings. So I'll make this an alignment based surface to change the triangulation. This currently hasn't made any changes because over here we see there's a red dot on my surface showing I've made a change to it but has yet to be applied. So if I right click here I can select to rebuild the surface which will then update in my section view and I can see the triangulation is now formed perpendicular to the alignment and the existing ground model matches how I desire our surface to be constructed. This tool is very useful for data prep modeling and also mass hall where you have large models that you're working with and you don't want to waste time with business center constantly reprocessing as you make small changes. Another thing we can look at here is if I just change my view to see our road model, what I can do is turn on the shading in the plan view to be by surface color. So what that should then give us is our road model. Sorry, I had the wrong surface selected. Select our road model, change that to show our surface color. So we see here we have our road model. And what I can change is to only show the shading where we have a slope range within certain parameters. So change that to yes. So between 0 and 10% we show our shading, which in this case is only on the main carriageway and within some of the steps going up the cut and fill batters, whereas the main batter slope exceeds the 10% so it's not shaded. Useful for finding out or visualizing the areas of flat or steep grades that you may need to know about on a design. What is also useful in here is we can turn on slope arrows. So if we need to know which way the water flows, quite simple to view this in plan or 3D and see which way the water flows as well. In one of the other videos we looked at creating points at intervals utilizing our CAD commands. So with this current line I could select to create points every 20 meters along the line and also where we have changes of grade or direction. So this gives us a range of points along the line 
These could either be set out or as built points, so coming from CSV or created in the office in our Kogo manner here. And what I can then look at doing is running a report to find out the deviation from the points to the surface. So if I go to my command line, I can start typing in points to surface. This then brings up the points to surface command, and here I can select a range of points and I'm going to report these to the existing ground model hit apply and now we can see the cut field deviations for all of these points as they go along the roadway another useful surface tool is the ability to create surface ties so what we can do here is create a tie from I'll put this on a new layer So we have an existing ground surface, and in this case, I'm going to use this building pad as a reference line. So I want the slopes to go outside the building pad. And I'm going to put in a spacing of every one meter that's going to go around the building pad and shoot off a cut or fill slope. So let's put in a cut slope of one to two and a fill slope of one to one. And we can then have either round or sharp corner ties hit apply that then shows me that currently I'm in cut we're seeing that slopes in red and we see that in plan and 3d view what I can then look at doing is move this object so my building pad is selecting I can move that in plan so as I click and drag we see that then updating in the 3d view and then now we're in blue so we can see we're in fill so I can place this building pad where I like it to either a in this case maximize the view or minimize cut and fill or if this was a retention pond maybe ensure we've got the correct volume uh, of water that's going to fit inside our retention pond uh, that could be demonstrated util utilizing smart text which we'll see later in this video now that we have the pad where we want it, what I'm going to do is create a surface from this information. So this will be our design model. And I also want the slopes to be part of our surface. So now we can see we have a model of our building pad with the slopes. And I can then look at merging that into the existing ground model. So if I create this as a final design and to demonstrate what's going to happen here I'll turn off the existing models or existing surfaces and the key thing is to read the note so surface 2 replaces surface 1 so in this case the surface 1 which is the less important information is the existing ground model. I have an option to either finish replaces existing or keep the maximum or minimum elevation so I'll run with finish replaces existing push OK and now we see we have our final model where if I make some slight changes to this so turn off the wireframe in my plan and 3d view and make this data easier to see by also turning off our break lines and our vertices as well So now we see in our 3D view here, we've got some nice data that we can send out to our machine control system so they can see cut and fill values while on the building pad and also while on the existing ground model. I just point out here that on the plan view, we have the shading turned off. So if I turn that to surface color, we'll then see that model appear uh, there as well as we see in the, in the 3D view. For those users in the Nordic region, it's common to calculate rock blasting costs. Uh, this is based on area and depth. So what we can look at doing is here we've got two models. We've got our design and we've got our surface. From that, we've then created a cut fill map or ISO pack, depending on your wording. So to determine the cut and fill areas and volumes, 
what we can do is define our uh, ISO pack here so we can edit the color mapping basically here I've defined that one meter above and one meter below where are our key spots so that's in the color mapping that will then be reported once we go into our reports here and we can run a surface report on our ISO pack so select the ISO pack and here we've got our table so area by depth is already defined based on the color mapping and push OK and we're then going to run off a report based on that information that then gives us a simple report where we get the surface information such as number of triangles and break lines etc and then we get our various information on the plan and surface area and the key thing here is we have between our one meter and zero for above and below our planned surface area and our actual surface area which is useful for payment earlier during the CAD video uh, we demonstrated how you could drag and drop sorry drag various CAD data in a model and that will then update dependent objects here we have a corridor model uh, we've turned that then into a cut fill map so we can see our cut and fill and plan view and also in 3d and we've cut a section through that so we've got borehole data showing topsoil soil and rock so our various cut materials and what I can then look at doing is seeing how our cut fill detail so I've got smart text attached to our cut fill map so we have the cut and the fill reported individually as well as the net balance and then if I select the profile and I can then drag up or down the vertical profile so in this instance I've raised the roadway and we'll see what impact that has to the rest so here we now see we've changed from being in cut to being in fill and we see that reflected in the 3D view in our cut fill map but that's also changed our cut fill volumes and our net volume so it's a very simple tool for either balancing cut and fill on a site or if you're making temporary roads you can basically match an alignment to meet an existing surface very useful for milling projects where you want to minimize the amount of cut but still keep a solid grade another tool we'll look at in the video on point clouds is the ability to create surfaces from point clouds this is useful for reporting volumes within polygons such as stockpiles um, but other than that that concludes this video on the surface modeling and interrogation tools